Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview of the new Check Luminosity button in Lumenzio version 1.5. What this new feature is going to let you do is to view your image in black and white with no color information. And there's a few times you may want to do that. For example, here we can see the shadow of my tripod. There was mixed lighting with the blue sky overhead intermingling with some lights that were behind me. Uh, even though I got out of the picture, there was still my tripod. Uh, in the exposure here and trying to adjust this it's not just a matter of doing a curves adjustment to make this lighter or darker it's actually blue versus more purple around it so if I can separate the tonal difference from the color difference that may help me do my retouching and fix that and I'll show how I do this in a later video but for now I'll just give you a demo of how the uh, check luminosity button works if I click on this you can see already it's grayscale um, there's not a lot of pop to the image, so what you can do is click check luminosity again and you get a higher contrast version which then shows this in greater detail. So that's kind of one way in which you might use this is just simply to understand the differences here and then I could apply a curve through a luminosity mask to get this underlying shadow fixed and then go back and separately fix the color and that just lets me um, make steps in isolation that might otherwise be kind of confusing to do. Um, so I'll show you a different example here and one that I will retouch. This is shot at the Philharmonic um, in Luxembourg and in this image here it's obviously a very simple image with very little color uh, and you just see these pillars. Well there are little defects in the pillars. They're all painted white but there's these marks so I went ahead and started cloning those out, got it as good as I you know, thought I could kind of with the, the bare eye, but there's actually a little bit more to it. Um, but first, one thing I decided to do with this image is I thought I'd kind of play with the sepia tone. So now you can just see with just, this is sort of the direction I was thinking of taking this image. And when I look a little bit closer, there are a couple of things here. I can see a little bit of a dust spot here. There looks like there was some retouching paint put on this pillar. It's very subtle. You might not even see this online. But if I click on the check luminosity button once, I'm not really going to see it because I just took up the color. Click it again. It boosts a little bit more. I'm starting to see it. I'm not quite seeing it. If I click it a third time, it just simply disables it. So the, the way this button works is it gives you kind of, you know, just luminosity, then a higher contrast luminosity, and then turns it off. And if you actually want to remove this, just click the X button and it will get rid of any orange or red layers in the image. So, well, you know, in a lot of cases, this button is going to give you what you need just by clicking a couple times. Uh, but this is one of those cases where you'd want to have a more specific custom range to really bring this out. And so what you can do is simply hold down the command or the control key and, and you'll see that noted here in the tooltip and click on this and you get a dialogue that basically says, hey, you know, let's pick the lightest and darkest tones. We're going to pick a range here. So in the first one, I'm just going to pick a tone that's a little bit darker than the area I want to see. I want to visualize this paint stripe. So I'm going to pick the darker areas to the edge here and say OK. And now in the second one, I'm going to pick the lighter areas. And it doesn't matter if you pick light or dark first. It's just going to look at the range. When I say OK, Lumenzi is automatically going to figure out what sort of contrast is there across this range and give you a high contrast preview. So now I can really see the paint error here. And in fact, I'm starting to see a lot of other stuff. I'm seeing uh, defects on this pillar here. That dust spot I mentioned is really visible. There's a few more subtle defects here. Um, you know, these may not come out in a print. This probably would. This definitely would. Um, this stuff here probably would. You know, if I wasn't looking at this preview, I just might not see that here. But by the time I sharpen and print this, I might actually have a problem on my hand. So this is a great way of finding this underlying detail. So let's go ahead and fix this. So I just want to go back to my clone layer and it's important that you work on something that's underneath this check luminosity layer because what we're going to do is load up the healing brush um, and that would be this one. Load up the healing brush and I want current and below. So it's going to sample from my background and apply it here but it's going to ignore the fact that stuff is going on above it. So even though I'm looking in black and white when I clone, it's going to clone in color uh, and it, it's going to you know, be correct. If I, if I said to sample all layers, then I would be including this. And if I had this beneath my clone, then I'd also be including it. So as long as this stays on top, and that's where it goes by default, but just make sure it's up above. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. 
and I'm just simply going to uh, my Wacom tablet's not uh, not behaving itself. Let's try with the mouse here. All right, switch back to the tablet. Sometimes my Wacom tablet just uh, there's some kind of issue with the driver, and uh, it just refuses to do what I want to do. So we'll just uh, we'll just deal with it. And I want to get rid of this little black spot that kind of keeps showing up here. And I like to resample a few times. One thing I don't like to do is retouch in a way where the same exact patterns pop up over and over. That can be a, a, a dead giveaway that something's been retouched, you know, like that black dot or even, you know, some little texture area like this. So I just hit things a few different ways, try and make sure I just really knock them out and, and do so in a way where I'm not creating some kind of a, an underlying pattern. And I'm being kind of sloppy here, but that's just because I'm working quickly. I would normally slow down just a, a touch here. I'm just going to get this perfectly aligned and then we can fix those black edges there. So at this point, Now you can still see some of that damage. I could go back and I really could spend a lot of time trying to get this just perfectly right. I don't think that's going to be necessary. Um, and we can see just, you know, turning the clone on and off. Here was what we had before and here's what we have after. And even though it's a little bit visible here when we really pop the detail with this check luminosity preview on it, when we turn it off, it just looks perfect. So here was the before. You can see it in the background somewhat and turn it on after and now it's perfect. So that's kind of the general idea with this check luminosity um, tool in, in version uh, 1.5 of Lumenzia. It's great for compositing, retouching, color adjustments, really anything where you either want to exaggerate what's underneath as I did here with this high contrast adjustment or anywhere where you want to remove the color information and just kind of work on your image one part at a time. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope you enjoy Lumenzio version 1.5.